sure. We're about to begin round nine. Seven remain, five boys and two girls. Before we get started, let's join Kaylee. Chris, join now by Tejas, the youngest competitor in the finals tonight at 11 years old. Tejas, what was it like for you out on that stage, competing in the finals in your first year here? Well, it was, I was just ecstatic when I was named as a championship finalist, and uh, I was happy to get back, get past the first round, and that I, um, even though I got a hard word, I managed it also. Three more years of eligibility for you here. What will you do differently as you prepare for the next go-round? Well, previously I was just preparing for the preliminaries test. Now I'll prepare more for the finals and try to go through more esoteric words. Esoteric words. Okay, if you say so. And everyone else will be preparing for you, Tages. Thank you so much. Congratulations on your accomplishments here. Chris. Kaylee, thanks. Tages, what a cutie. What a precocious young man. Uh -huh. We're going to see a lot more of him. Time now for Jacob. Hello. Hi. Carcaradont. Carcaradont. All right, what's the definition? Carcharodont is an adjective, and it means of or resembling the great white shark, especially having teeth of sharp, triangular, flattened form with finely serrated edges. Okay, I think I know this. Yeah. All right. This is from Greek, right? Yes, carcharodont is from Greek. Okay, carcharodont. C A R. C-H-A-R-O-D-O-N-T, Carcharodont. Correct. should leave the wordifying to the dictionary writers who get paid to Websterize. <laughs> and language version, please. It's from Greek. Logadidoli, logadedoli. Two Is pronunciations. Is this kind of a Greek root logos meaning word? Yes. Logadidoli. That middle syllable and the two pronunciations should help her figure out the combination, mm -hmm. which is a bit unique. Are there any alternate pronunciations? There's just logadidly and logadedly. Logadidly. L O G O D A E D A L Y. Logadidly. Correct. <laughs> well done. She has a tough act to follow after Jacob, but she's handling it. And you see we've got a Jonathan who finished sixth, the mother, of course, her coach. This family's been invested here for a long time. Those dreams could come true. Good evening. Good evening. Buñuelo. Buñuelo. May I have the definition, please? A flat, semi-sweet cake fried in deep fat and usually served with sugar and cinnamon or cane syrup. As in, the doctor was unamused by J.P. and Cyrus's enthusiastic description of their Buñuelo diet. Uh, may I have the language of origin, please? It's from Spanish. Are there any other pronunciations, please? There's just the one, Buñuelo. 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 Okay, Buñuelo. B U N U E L O, Buñuelo? Correct. <laughs> She's never seen that word before, Chris, but she likes Spanish. It comes easy to her. What's easy to her might be tough for someone else. She did a great job there of trusting what she knows and not making it more difficult. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Pam Hooty. Pam Hooty. No, it's from a Persian derived, perhaps from a Persian derived French word. Pam Hooty. Definition, please. A pampoodie is a shoe of untanned cowhide worn in the Aran Islands of County Galway, Ireland, as in, pampoodie is as uncomfortable to say in public as it is to wear in public. I agree. <laughs> pampoodie. P-A-M-P-O-O-T-I-E, pampoodie? Correct. He talks about LeBron James and his focus under pressure. That word would have thrown a lot of these kids for a loop because it's just so obscure. He made it look easy. And he's very experienced that he's learned to just don't give up and you also ignore the cameras. <laughs> it's experience for you. Our live spelling coverage continues after this. You're watching the Scripps National Spelling Bee. Scripps National Spelling Bee. 